Good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, whenever you choose to listen to our service here from Memorial Presbyterian Church. My name is Jordan, and I have the privilege to serve as one of the pastors here. As I'm sure you are all wrestling with, this has been a bizarre week, um, a bizarre week to adjust to new rhythms, and it looks like those new rhythms will continue for several weeks. So for us, that means that church will look different for a few weeks. It means that I will stare at a recording device instead of all your lovely faces as I give the little message. And But I think it's important as our lives become inconvenienced, as our daily lives become frustrated and inconvenienced and unclear of what the next few weeks look like, we have to remember why we are taking the precautions we are taking. And we are taking them to ensure that the most vulnerable in our society are looked after and cared for. And for me, that means thinking of a friend of mine who is my age and has cystic fibrosis. His lung capacity operates on a good day at 48%. He may look on the outside as young, fit and healthy, but in, if this illness was to come to him, it would have some pretty catastrophic consequences. So we need to remind ourselves of why we are taking the precautions that we are. And it's people like my friend with cystic fibrosis or why we're taking these precautions. As much as we would love to see you and have you here and for the foreseeable future, it looks like this will be the interaction that we will have. Our session and our staff will be calling all of you individually um, to check in on you to see how you are doing and what your needs are. And we will have to really kind of rest with and reshape and think that church is always meant to be so much bigger than just the building and the gatherings that we have. So this crisis is an opportunity for us to really respond with love and care for one another. And as much as we will be socially distanced from one another, that will not distract or take away from the community that we will have and we will build. And it gives us an opportunity to reach out more often, think of others more often and, and call others and to be present, not physically with one another, but to know that there is a community around that cares, that loves. And in this time, we'll have to really rethink of how can we be present with one another in this time of social distancing. It's still a little bit like a hurricane, um, but a hurricane that doesn't have a cone of certainty other than it's the world. Um, and it's been interesting to sort of connect with my family back in Scotland about this. When we have hurricanes, they call me and they're concerned, but they're not going through it. Um, they're not putting up shutters, they're not buying supplies, but they're going through this now as well. So it's, um, it's been interesting to have the sort of the solidarity with people all across the nation and all across the world that are bracing themselves to, to deal with this virus. Um, we need to stay calm, we need to be vigilant, and we need to listen listen to what our government officials are telling us and their current regulations are no gatherings of more than 10 people. So for the rest of the month of March, that means we will not have any meetings here at the church and all our interactions with you will be through the communications via social media and via email. And after March, um, as we get closer to Easter, we will advise on whatever the CDC regulations are at that time. But for the month of March, we will have no services and after March, we will give you updates week by week on what our worship together will look like. And I can remain, um, commend to you to exercise, um, to eat well, to stay healthy, to check in on your friends and family. And amongst all this sort of disruption and social distancing, try and maintain as much as possible a rhythm of normalcy. Look after your body, uh, look after those that are close to you. Um, and, and let us remember that we need to act out of love and care for one another, not out of fear. And um, this virus is out of our control and we need to trust God and look to him for our sustenance, for our, um, our hope, but trust the officials and the medical services to do um, the job that they are paid to do. We can struggle with feelings of powerlessness, feel overwhelmed by um, the enormity and the gravity of the situation. But we know that we have a God who is not just sovereign, but a God who is Emmanuel, a God who is with us, a God who is present with us. He draws close to us in this time. And we seek to him um, for comfort, for strength and for wisdom and how we can rethink and remodel what it means to do church and to have church and to have community when we can't be physically present with one another. Um, our series in John that we had started is called Come to the Table, um, which to me has kind of brought up those ideas of what the table represents. The table represents family, it represents community, it represents diversity. We have food, we have restaurants from all over the world. Um, but in this time of social distance, the table also represents hope and the anticipation of when we can all gather again together. 
um, our tables may have may feel empty when we go into restaurants we may be only picking up so that sense of sitting down pausing resting and enjoying the environment is something that seems like it might not happen for a little bit at least in a public in a community setting so in this time as you think about coming to the table we don't only have the experience and the hope of coming to the table to meet Jesus in our daily lives but we have the hope and the expectation of a community when again we will gather around the table and break bread together again. So we're in this time of isolation and social distance where we need to reimagine and rethink what community looks like and how we can engage with one another in ways through technology, through phone calls, whatever that may look like. But for the time being we'll continue um, with that anticipation of coming to the table again. Have that picture and that anticipation at the forefront of your minds. And the sermon, uh, the little sermonette we're going to have today comes from the Gospel of John in John chapter 4. This is the story of Jesus when he heals the official's son. I'll be reading from John chapter 4 verses 43 through to 54. This is from the NIV. Jesus heals an official son. After two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honour in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick in Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him, to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to when this son got better, they said to him, yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which he had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. So Galilee is this sort of outskirt backwater um, outside of Jesus' hometown. And this is where he form, performs the first two signs of his gospel, uh, of John's gospel, um, concerning the acts and wonders of Jesus. There was not the main stage, it wasn't the, the grand place where Jesus could have performed these things, but it was with people that felt ostracized from traditional mainstream Judaism. There was a wedding that he was invited to and there was a royal official son. One was very public and one was much more intimate. The man may have well has felt pretty dismissed by Jesus. There's just sort of like awkward interaction that the man comes to Jesus with the most important thing he has, his son, and says, my son is dying. Can you heal him? And Jesus almost flippantly just says, go. And the man must have felt dismissed, not really too sure how to take or to handle um, this interaction. But it says, Jesus says to them that you people will only believe if you see signs and wonders. That we have, and we too can resonate with that, that we have these large expectations, that we will truly believe we will take that next step in faith when we see a grand sign, when we pray to God and we see the thing that we want to see, that's only then will we believe. But Jesus says that it's the more subtle acts that help us. It's the man barging his way through the crowd and coming to Jesus in the expectation that this is a man who is powerful, this is a man who can heal. That was the sign, that was the wonder that the man took the step of faith to step out there. And granted, it is a wonderful sign that the man's son was healed. And that's one of the things that led him to and his household believe. Perhaps in this time um, of states of emergencies, of national crises, is, is a time when we're looking for signs and wonders. We're looking for God to speak. We're looking for him to jump in and intervene. And we hope that God will intervene and the spread of this disease will slow down. But perhaps the question for us is to wrestle where is God present amongst the struggle? Not necessarily asking for a grand sign or wonder, but where can God draw near to us in this time? Where can he be present in our daily lives as they become disrupted? 
as we discover new rhythms of working from home, from socializing from home, where is God present? Where is God Emmanuel with us in these times as our rhythm of life slows down, as we interact with less people, and if we have more time on our hands, where is God present with us there? There may be no grand sign or wonder in the sky, but in this little, in this sign of healing, that we can look to God and say that he is present, he is near. And the question for us is, are we looking for that grand sign or wonder? We're waiting with anticipation that, you know, if only then we see the grand sign, that's when I will turn my life around. But perhaps the call for us is to make those more subtle changes in the day to day for God drawing closer and nearer to us, being present in our everyday life. It was a simple act of faith from the man. It may have been arduous from him to barge his way through the crowd to get to Jesus, but he came. It may have been a Hail Mary that this man has done wonderful things in Jerusalem. I've heard about them and my son is dying and I will do anything to try and save my son's life. So he came and said, Jesus, my son is dying. Desperation can be a powerful, powerful motivator. And it's at times when things in life are really bad. It's only when we rely on God. We go to God. Um, when we have no other option left. But the call in John's Gospel is that Jesus is present with us at all times. We have an opportunity every day to invite Jesus to the table of our lives and to come to him and seek him as Emmanuel present with us. Not just in times of crisis like we are in now, but in every day of our life. Where is God present? Where is Jesus near? And what opportunities can we take to invite him to the table in the every day of our lives and we can often get so wrapped in fear especially in times like this we can go on these spirals of worst case scenario thinking but this is a time where we can take it all in a balance of pragmatism and faith not just have complete faith that there's nothing to worry about god's in control not swing the other way into panic fear and just freaking out but have a middle ground of faith and pragmatism to say that we trust god that he is sovereign but we also have to be pragmatic and take the precautions that we need to take. And then look around and say, where can my community help me? And where can I invest in my community? Who are your elderly neighbors that you can be the hands of Jesus to this week? Who's a relative or a friend that you can call or check in with to give a sense of community when nobody is physically present? And it gives us an opportunity to really rethink church beyond the Sunday service. How are we being church in our daily lives? How are you working from home? How are you interacting with your families? How are you being church today for those around you? In this time, we are empowered to love one another. We are empowered to be present with one another. And we are empowered to seek God and invite him into the everyday of our lives. Not just in times of crisis, but in the everyday. Where is God present? Where is Jesus near? And where can we take small steps of faith, inviting him closer to the table with us. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message and for the faith of the royal official. May we take steps to come closer to Jesus, not just in times of crisis, but in our everyday. I pray that you would be with our nation's leaders, that they would find compromise and be able to put a bill forward to help industries and individuals. And I pray that the money would get to those who need it the most. Be with our medical staff, across the country and across the world. Thank you for their bravery. Thank you for um, their tenacity in dealing with this illness. Give them courage, give them strength, and give them wisdom, and ultimately keep them safe and protect them. And Father, we pray that the curve of this virus would flatten and, and that we would get back to a sense of normalcy soon. Be with the members of our congregation who are sick just now. Um, we think of the Parmelees, we think of Gail Cooney, we think of the Littles, and we think of Margie and Jack, draw near to them and be with us as a church as we are not physically present with one another and give us opportunities to connect via phone calls, via FaceTimes and via church services online. Father, you're good and we trust you. Draw near to us and give us opportunity to invite Jesus to the table in our every day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.